Welcome back to Let's Play Trauma Team. Oh my gosh, it has been a while since I recorded this game. It's been months, guys. It's been so long since I recorded this game. It <sighs> Words can I express how excited I am that I'm finally ready to continue. So in the last episode... Wait, what the hell? I'm blowing in my Wii remote, my nunchuck. There we go. So, in the last episode, we continued the uh, the investigation of Miss Alma Parker, and it finds out that her daughter, I forgot her name, <laughs> I forgot her name, but her daughter had actually been killed as well, so... So we're going to have to sort out some, if some more information here. I'm going to need some, like... I ain't gonna need a recap of what happened in the last episode, because I have the serious... Of Alma Parker, the first victim. Oh, there we go, yeah. We just found out that Alma Parker's daughter was Abigail killed. Parker. Abigail's her name. These were her last words. I'm not making any promises, but I've heard your words. To switch between corpses. Oh no, that's... Ab there we go. Abigail Parker, let's take a look. Any fingers? No. Same wound on her it chest. On the chest. This must be the fatal wound. The same cross shapes mm -hmm. well. This stab wound has an odd shape. I've seen this somewhere before. Oh pretend oh, don't pretend like you don't know. Same cut on her hand. It seems like it was inflicted intentionally. I feel like I've seen a similar wound somewhere before. Really? That's it? Alright, sweet. All right, let's check her clothes. Look at this 2002 phone. This is the cell phone that Abigail was carrying. It won't turn on. This should be sent in for analysis. It may have some useful information. Well, we already know what we're gonna do with that. Up oh, the same hair as well. Mm. Abigail's hair isn't black. I've seen this black hair before. It's... The black hair, it was on Alma's clothes. That's right. It was animal fur. That's everything as well. So let's go back to our pooter and sort all this information out. Need some analyze this Abigail cell phone? Yes, can you see if it can be repaired? We might be able to learn something from it. Gotcha, get all right on that. Alright. Mysterious fur with the this other mysterious the fur. These two hairs are identical. So we know that the hair from the fur found in the fireplace at the murder scene was on both of the two victims. From this, we can deduce that... Uh... The killer wore the fur. Indeed. The murderer had been wearing or using the fur somehow. Thus, it's not surprising if we found evidence of it with both the victims. Uh... Da, 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 da. The same brute... Wait. Hmm. There we go. These murders are too similar for us to dismiss the possibility that they're related. The wound on Alma's hand wasn't caused by external trauma, while Abigail's wound was obviously made using a sharp tool. At first glance, these may seem to be completely unrelated. However, if we consider any similarities or connections between the two corpses, these wounds may indicate some hidden link that we haven't discovered yet. All right. Today a corpse. Can we examine the uh non of serious ashes? That's not relevant. Nope. Hmm. Mm-mm. I 
about her wound. Can we tell anything from this wound? One moment. Let's see. The stab wound in her chest is the same shape as Alma's stab wounds. Is that so? My hunch was right. This proves. It's the same killer. Oh no, I'm stupid. It's the same murder weapon. I'm stupid. Yes. Both murders were committed using the same weapon. So were they murdered by the same person? It's likely, but there's no conclusive evidence of that just yet. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. The wounds aren't exactly the same. There's something very different about them. Uh, where? It's... The depth. Yes, the depths aren't the same. Couldn't that just be coincidence? They weren't killed by a machine after all. Uh, I can't rule that out as a possibility either. Still, Alma's stab wound pierces all the way through her body and out her back. Abigail's wound barely reaches her heart. These wounds would require a vast difference in strength to inflict. Oh, there probably is a different killer then. In any case, it's dangerous to make more assumptions than is absolutely necessary. Well, maybe he did Let's kill his daughter. Maybe the husband did kill his daughter. Because, you know, he's in a wheelchair. He's There's no possible way, like, that he could have pierced his wife through the freaking, um, through her body. And then Abigail's was barely reached her heart. So maybe he killed his daughter. And then Alma's murderer or somebody else. No evidence of that yet. Nah, it's still more. Mm, indeed, these facts can be put together. Alma and her daughter Abigail. The two corpses share one common thing. That is... The weapons that killed them. They're ages! Yes. The same weapon was used for both murders. Another similarity can be found among their belongings as well. That is... The animal fur. Yes, both of them had the same type of animal fur on them. There's a very Wait, did that say same killer? These crimes were committed by the same person. Oh, you, wow, okay. Well, maybe he did kill his wife then, because, like, I don't know who else could have killed... Like, this... That doesn't seem consistent to me. It's very likely that they were killed by the same person. How? Sorry about that, I got interrupted for a second, but, but anyway, weapon inconsistency. Wait, what? Ah, uh, Dr. Kimishima, a new testimony has arrived. Good. Whose testimony is it this time? Let's see. First, we have the person who found Abigail's corpse. He owns a restaurant, but he seems to be an acquaintance of the victim. Really? How did they know each other? Well, it seems the victim was an occasional customer at the restaurant. According to the testimony, the victim had been <coughs> at the restaurant not long ago. I see. This may be able to help us determine the victim's situation before she was killed. We should confirm when he last saw the victim as well. Yes. There's another bit of testimony that needs to be addressed. Go on. Well, um... It's Joseph Parker. He's begun confessing to his daughter's murder as well. What? When the questioner asked him about Abigail's corpse, he started with the whole I did it spiel again. Why did you fools tell him about Abigail? Well, he is her father after all. Someone was bound to tell him. <sighs> well, we've lost the chance to learn what really happened from him. No matter where you go, there's always somebody who has to ruin it for everyone. <sighs> oh well, what's done is done. I'll listen to his testimony too. Send the voice data over. Understood. Please do so. Okay, let's take a listen. Uh, Victor Pedrini. Joseph Parker. Let's listen to Joseph's first. Listen to recording. Okay. What? Abigail was... Is that true? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I killed my daughter Abigail, too. I'm admitting it. I did it. What more is there to investigate? Who cares about the weapons? It doesn't matter. Quit fooling around and give me the death penalty. 
Okay, now I'm really confused. <laughs> so, okay, he sounds like he was uh, surprised to hear that his daughter got killed. He was like, what? Abigail died? And then he was like, oh yeah, I did it. So, so he didn't kill his daughter? What? Okay, so, okay, this guy might not, this guy's not the killer. When did you last see her? Well, when I found the body, I was up that morning fishing for the restaurant's chef's catch special. Oh yeah, if you go out a bit there, they're quite easy to catch. The uh, market's fish aren't, aren't good enough. No, for the fish to be at their freshest, they, they have to be killed right when they're caught. Well, uh, I was shocked. I never imagined I'd pull up a corpse. And even worse, it was Miss Abby Parker. That's right, I, I've known the Parkers for years. She'd come to the restaurant with her parents every now and again. Heavens, no, they, they never fought. They seemed very happy, a wonderful family. The last time Miss Abby came was three days ago. No, her parents weren't with her at the time. She was there with a gentleman. Uh, yeah, she was there three days ago. Hmm. He says that Abigail was at his restaurant three days ago. So Abigail was still alive at that time. So she was still alive three days ago. Huh. How long ago did she die? Two days ago. Oh, there you go. We can trace Abigail's whereabouts with these facts. Her corpse was found about two days since her death. The man who found her body last saw her three days ago. That means that when the chef saw her... Wait, Abigail was last seen three days ago, and she had been dead two days before her body was found. That means she was seen... Hold on. What? <laughs> three? Okay. She was last seen three days ago, and she has been dead two days before her body was found. That means she... Okay, if she was seen three days ago, and then she was seen... And then her body... Okay, she'd been dead two days before her body was found. She was seen days before death. What?! Seen... Was seen after she died? WHAT?! That was careless. I didn't get that question at all. Yes. It was not long before she was killed. Oh, I'm probably hella stupid. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm just stupid. There's a high possibility that Abigail was killed soon after she left his restaurant. Really? Investigate the man who was seen with her the night she died. Oh, I'm a moron. Who was she with? Oh, Dr. Kimishima, could I bother you for a moment? Uh, if I said no, would you leave me alone? Uh, no. I definitely think you should hear this. Alright, hurry up. <laughs> Thank you. Well, HQ has made a move. The FBI has arrested a suspect for Abigail's murder. What's going on? Who knows? Maybe they're jumping the gun. I don't know what the higher-ups are thinking. The man's name is Sean Bowen. He was Abigail's boss where she worked. His wife, Carolyn Bowen, was also taken in for interrogation. They're both at HQ now. Huh. Is there any evidence that he's the killer? It seems that this was found at the scene where Abigail had been murdered. What's this? It's an expensive lighter made in France. It's a custom order with his name engraved on it. Sean Bowen. Well, there's no mistaking that. We also showed Sean's picture to that chef. What would you need in the what would you need a like a custom made lighter for unless you smoke? You confirmed that Sean was the man with Abigail at the restaurant the night she died. Probably smokes, so that's why. I see. Let me guess. Here's what the FBI thinks happened. Abigail was having an affair with her boss. The situation got complicated, so he killed her. Bingo, Dr. Kimishima. That's exactly what HQ thinks happened. What about Alma's murder, then? Would he take the trouble to murder the girl's mother to hide his affair? Honestly, I don't think they're looking that far ahead. They'd rather believe this than think that Joseph committed either of the murders. I see. So Joseph is defending the man who killed his own daughter? I highly well, doubt that. Now that you mention it, that doesn't make sense at all. 
He, pro he probably doesn't oh, even know this guy. I can't say for certain that this man, Bowen, isn't the murderer just yet. I'm sure he'll be able to tell us what Abigail was doing on that night as well. Can you get the interrogation recordings, little guy? I've already got them. I know my stuff. Nice of you to stay on top of things. Send me that data ASAP. Got it. I'll do that now. Boss's account. Sean Bowen. Oh, he's handsome. Listen to the recording. Good heavens. What's going on? I haven't done anything to get interrogated by people like you, Abby. Yes, she, she did work for us. She was a very innocent and, and beautiful girl. You know the type, right? Look, I'm sure you figured it out for yourself, right? What we have is a relationship between two consenting adults. She's the one who asked me to meet her at the restaurant. But she got a phone call and left before the meal came. Where she went. How should I know? Uh, she said something came up, but but who knows? Huh? That's my lighter. Where did you... To the scene of the murder? A, a warehouse at the harbor? No! I've never been there! I don't even carry that lighter with me. I keep it at home, so what would it be doing there? I get it. This is a trap. Someone's setting me up to be the killer. Listen, that lighter's a custom-made, expensive piece. I keep it carefully locked in a showcase at home. A showcase? It's in my living room at my house. The only keys to the case belong to me and... <gasps> me and... Oh, don't tell me. Oh, why did his testimony end there? Oh, that's when his lawyer arrived. And they took measures so he wouldn't say anything self-incriminating, I take it. That's all right, though. I learned something important that I hadn't been expecting. Huh? You got some useful information from that recording? <sighs> You weren't paying attention. If that man is telling the truth, then Abigail's cell phone has an important clue. That is... According to Sean's account, the victim's cell phone may have important information. That is, recordings of the calls made, received. Yes. Upon receiving a call from someone, she abruptly left the restaurant and was killed. It's quite possible that call came from the murderer. I see. Even if the caller isn't the killer, we can identify who called her. Gotcha. I'll make sure they hurry up and analyze the cell phone. Uh, wait. We also need evidence to back his testimony up as well. Uh, that's true. What can we do about that? Hmm. It shouldn't be difficult to get a witness to verify his testimony. A witness? But who? Think about it. It would have to be... Chef. Yes. Can you go talk to that chef one more time? No problem. I'll ask him for more details about that night. There's also that lighter to consider. It's most likely that it was removed from Bowen's house by... Carolyn. Yes. According to his statement, the lighter was supposed to be in his home. The only person besides him who would have been in a position to take it would be his wife, Carolyn. If we inspect the lighter itself, we may learn something from it. I see. Send it over right now, so please use the recorder to listen to it. Yes, make sure I get those. I'm counting on you, little guy. Okay, we're gonna end the episode here, guys. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Trauma Team. I'll see you guys next time in the next episode. We're gonna look at Carolyn's account. Wait, hold on. Do we even have it? <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we're gonna listen to Carolyn's account. Oh, she's kinda hot. But anyway, we're gonna listen to Carolyn Bowen's testimony next episode all right see you guys next time bye bye